Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having uh, a great weekend. As for me, it has been an extremely challenging week uh, for more than one reason, and it hasn't gotten any better uh, today. Um, those of you who've been following know that I temporarily suspended operations at the Odyssey Project, uh, citing a lack of support and funding. And on the heels of that, I received news from Dallas, a place that I used to do work in a lot. I lived there for like four and a half years. Uh, and I did a lot of work there. That a young girl named Asia Womack, 21 years old, was killed by a 31-year-old man after losing a basketball game. She beat him in basketball. Uh, it was some track talking. From what I understand, she's a former high school standout. And... Uh, the guy that she beat is supposed to be a family friend. Uh, he lost, uh, took his ego, went home, came back with a gun and fired at least five times at her, killing her. Uh, this didn't just happen. It happened a few days ago, but uh, it just got to me. Um, they've issued a $5,000, um, a $5,000 uh reward uh, for any news leading to his capture and arrest. And, um, you know, and I'm struggling right now because these are the things that have been behind my passion to keep services going. Uh, emotionally unstable men who can't manage their egos and who can't manage their emotions and who turn violence in such a way in 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 definitely unprovoked i mean basketball trash talking is a part of growing up in the hood um your ego is bruised okay you lost to a female get over it um nobody here is professional nobody's getting paid and even if that you lost it's that simple uh, but the ego is bruised and the ego is is fragile and we act like there's no problem. What I do know is I can't shut down Odyssey. I don't know what I'm going to do about funding, but I can't shut it down because that's somebody's daughter who was senselessly killed. Senseless, senselessly killed. Uh, and it's not just females, but you know how I am about protecting our women. You know how I am about um, working with our young men so that we can develop strong uh, men who can manage their emotions, who have a inherent desire to be protectors. Uh, I've talked about this for years and I've worked extremely uh, hard on um, doing what I can to help uh, in the in the uh, responsibility of properly socializing our young black males. Um, I'm not saying that if I had all the funding in the world that I could have stopped what happened Monday. That would be senseless and that would be uh, disingenuous. And and uh, but what I am saying is I have shown and proven that we can reduce the occurrences of senseless violence uh, by addressing the issue. I have presented tons of empirical data. I have presented uh, countless uh, volumes uh, in writing, in lectures. Uh, my work speaks for itself, but I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I know that I am just exhausted and flabbergasted right now. Not just with this, there's a lot going on. Uh, being honest, there's a lot going on. Uh, but when you give your life to something and you dedicate your life to something and things don't go, I mean, they don't have to go perfectly. I don't expect a perfect world. I've been around long enough to know better than that. And I think anybody that follows my work, that follows me as a professional, that follows me as an advocate, 
an activist understands that I know what I'm up against and I know what's out there. Uh, but when we sit up and we pretend that there's not a problem and we sit casually by as things fall apart, that that definitely is on us. And again, I'm not saying that if I had all the funding I needed that I would have saved that girl's life because that would be disingenuous and I'm not suggesting anything of the sort. I'm saying there are gonna be problems. Death has always existed. Violence will always exist. Whether it's poverty and frustration, we're gonna have violence. But what I can tell you is the manner at which a lot of this stuff happens can be directly linked to the lack of proper socialization. Uh, I'm not the first one who brought it forward. Dr. Amos Wilson talked about it. Dr. Gerard DeGruy has done a great deal of work on it. Dr. Howard Stevenson uh, at the University of Pennsylvania has done a great deal of work on it. Um, uh, Dr. Fully Love has done a great deal of work on it. I've just been the latest champion of the cause and I have taken it and stretched it and developed an actual rite of passage program. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do as far as funding, but I'm definitely not shutting down the organization. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to figure out something. But what I do know is that we can't consistently and continuously sit around and pretend that this isn't happening. We can't pretend that our daughters aren't dying at the hands of our sons and our sons aren't killing one another and themselves. We can't pretend that we're not imploding. We can't pretend that marriages aren't falling apart and the gulf between black men and black women isn't widening. And while simultaneously we're losing touch uh, in the race to develop wealth, the wealth gap widening between us and whites because we can't build together, we can't stand together, we can't work together. We're not properly preparing our children. We're not holistically educating them. We're not sending them out into the world readily prepared to go into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and, and compete and win. Uh, we are failing in so many categories that it's almost hard to keep up with it now. But when someone sends me something like that, and like I said, it's already been a rough week, but when someone sends me something like that, it's it's just draining. This is a 21-year-old girl. And, you know, and I'm a guy. Nobody wants to lose to a girl in something that's physical. That's supposed to be our area. We're supposed to, but hey, you, if you're not a real baller and you're messing with a girl who's a real baller, you just might get you know, get the business. Um, if you don't want to take the risk of getting the business, don't get out there. But whatever happens, man, and you, you know, and I can imagine what happened. All the boys, all the dogs were out there and they, they were giving him the work. She giving him that work and she talking to you and she beating you and they giving you the, the business. You catch a smoke from everywhere and your ego bruised. That's too emotionally fragile for a man way too emotionally fragile. We have to be stronger than that. We've got to be better than that. But you, the thing is, again, emotionally fragile men aren't born. They're created when we fail them. The same thing, emotionally mature and emotionally intelligent and strong, mentally strong men aren't born. They're created. And we have to systematically and consistently and collectively do the work. Whatever the work is, we've got to do the work. I just sit up and I'm like, I'm just like blown away that we lost a baby because of a basketball game. Now, if this would have been a young black kid, young black male killing another black male behind a basketball game, I would still be very, very frustrated right now because that's still African-American adolescent young adult male violence. We're going to sit around and pretend ourselves into, into some cataclysmic canyon that we'll never come out of if we haven't already because we're treating 
things of this significance as if it's no big deal, as if, okay, it's going to work itself out. Maybe if we just type, oh my God, enough, it'll stop. Maybe if we type shaking my head enough, it'll stop. Maybe if we sit up and talk about how evil a person who did it is, it'll stop. By the time a person gets to where they can do that, they've been failed so many times, it's crazy. And the easy thing is to do is sit up and just say, hey, they are incorrigible. They are throw away. They need to be put down. And there's a chance there are some people out there that need to be just put down because there's nothing you can do for them now. But they weren't born that way. 1% of the population is born with psychopaths. Every, all the other stuff is created. That means that we have a responsibility in it. So, look, uh, my, fam my, 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 my uh, prayers, my heart goes out to the family of that young lady and to the family of that young man because from what I understand, he had kids. And I don't know if the kids were with him when he returned, but they were with him when he left. Uh, regardless, at some point, they're going to catch him. And his life is screwed and over. And so he's going to leave kids again with no father, no role model. Here we go. You got to see how this thing works. They're not just failing at the moment. They're failing everything behind them that's depending on them to be who they need to be. And so what happens when one of these kids that he's leaving behind becomes him or worse? At what point do we sit up and say something different has to be done? At what point do we sit up and say enough is enough? I don't want that to be my daughter, but I don't want it to be anyone's daughter. We better start caring. We better start caring about what's happening. We better start caring about uh, what we're doing and what we're not doing to be a part of the solution. This isn't a pass the buck time. This isn't a somebody's going to do it time. This is one of those what can I do times. Stop passing the buck. Stop thinking somebody else is going to do it. Stop sitting up thinking all I got to worry about is me. That selfish individualism is destroying us. I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to figure out, you know, what my next move is. Uh, but I can tell you right now, I'm not shutting it down. If I don't get another donation or another dime, I'm not shutting it down. I'm not going to quit on my people no matter what happens. Um, I'm not going to sink my family either, but I'm going to figure out something. I'm going to trust God. God has been there for me and, and kept me in so many ways. It's unimaginable. And I'm trusting that I'm doing something that's righteous. I'm doing something that's good. I'm doing something uh, that has honor. And I'm trusting that at some point uh, the answer is going to be there. But what I will tell you is no matter what happens, the people who watch this video, you have a responsibility. I don't know what it is you need to do or what it is you are driven to do or what it is you feel compelled to do. But there's going to have to be something that you do. Sitting back and, 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 and criticizing, sitting back and judging, sitting back, sitting back and hoping, sitting back and sitting back and just going, you know, you know, somebody needs to do something. No, everybody needs to do something, including you. Again, to the parents of Asia Womack, my heart goes out to you. Uh, the family of Asia, my heart goes out to you. The family of the, the uh, young 31-year-old man who took her life. Uh, my, my heart goes out to that family because they're going to be in disarray, disruption, um, and in trauma. What are we going to do? I'm going hard in the paint, and I'll figure, I'll figure out as I move, but I'm not quitting. I don't care how many blows I take. I don't care how difficult it gets. This is part of my legacy, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do the best I can to leave an imprint on this world. Uh, I've taken a beating this year, but I'm still breathing, so I'm still in the fight. Now, the challenge is, what are you going to do? On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you for letting me have your time this late in the evening. But it needed to be said. I'm out.